equatorial Africa, southeast Nigeria, heartland of the Igbo people, formerly known to the world as Biafrans. We welcome you to Nigeria. We heartily welcome you to Onitsha Archdiocese. We welcome you to the heart of Igbo land. The Archbishop of Onitsha hears that Tasmanian Catholics are desperately in need of priests. From among his many hundreds, he offers three of them as missionary priests. The Irish missionaries came here to evangelize us in 1885. Today we are going to Australia to assist our brothers and sisters who need our services. To God be the glory now and forever. Tasmania's Archbishop Doyle is invited to Nigeria by Archbishop Okeke. He formally receives the three priests. Three missionaries who have not volunteered, who have only been priests a short time, who have never left Africa before. Sent by their bishop to save Tasmania's struggling church. Can they fulfill the mission? Church in crisis, Archbishop Doyle's solution is bringing in missionary priests. I see it, think it was my decision, my initiative, and I carry the responsibility for it. It's a decision taken as his priests age and retire. No replacements are coming forward in this secular world. Oh, I guess, yeah, you are very much like me. <laughs> Everybody smiling, looking happy, everybody. Father Felix, 32 years old, an inner city based priest, ordained only two and a half years. The oldest at 36, and a rural priest of seven years, Father Christopher. Father Kenne, 33, working at a seminary, five years a priest. Their host in Hobart is priest administrator, Father Brian Nichols. We're staying here at the Cathedral Presbytery for the first month or so. They are here for a three year period, just to alleviate the priest shortage in the Archdiocese. Father Brian's been a priest for 29 years. We've got the heater on, it's nice and warm. That's lovely. This is probably the coldest Hobart morning we've had this winter so far. <laughs> How are you? Okay. <laughs> they need a bit of warming up. I offered them a scotch, they've opted for a tea. So well, I've lived here for 10 years by myself, so this is a learning curve for me as well. Oh, it's a bit cold in here, isn't it? It is a bit cold. Before, I'm afraid, afraid of the cold, but now no more. I hope I'm uh, looking fine at this. And I'm a tennis player. I do tennis. I play tennis, so I come with my, I come with my racket. It was after our selection that we started hearing about Australia being too cold. I have my traditional attire. <laughs> I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. 
The missionary fathers all come from a strong tribal culture in a region of Africa still recovering from recent conflicts. The Archdiocese of Anicca is home to over two million people. And for one and a half million of them, it's the Catholic faith which brings them together. Religion is the heart of the community. Catholicism is their way of life. Many people here in Onitsha were afraid that the weather in Australia could kill the missionaries. But for the priests asked to volunteer, their fears went far deeper. I never volunteered. We were told to volunteer, I ran away. I didn't want to come to Tasmania <laughs> because I was afraid they would kill me, you know. The and they don't love us, they see us as monkeys and all that. <laughs> With no volunteers from among 363 priests, their archbishop decided to nominate his missionaries. Well, I accept the proposal. I told him, yeah, you are my bishop. Yeah, there's nothing I can do rather than accept it. So the archbishop proposed it to me and I accepted it. Even if I die, it is the work of Christ, so. I never opted to come to Australia. It's only that that chance was given. And even when that chance was given to us, I didn't even opt to come. It's only when I saw that nobody is opting to go. I said, well, if nobody wants to go, I will now, I will now go. For Archbishop Okeke, this mission to Tasmania goes very deep. He wants to pay back a debt to the Irish missionaries who brought Catholicism to the Igbo people in the 1800s. West Africa was called the white man's grave because of malaria. So to go there meant to go to war. Some died after two weeks, some after one month, some after two months, some after two years. And all of them died young. But that did not stop them. More missionaries continued to come until we became a Catholic country because of the sweat and blood of the missionaries. So uh, if it is our turn to help, uh, we will not mind. It is uh, reciprocity. It's still a hard call for young men sent to a distant country. Aussie coffee, this is Italian coffee. Australia is not in Africa, and then as the definition goes, it is at the end of the world. <laughs> so that concept that you are going to the end of the world, you know, could make one, you know, shudder. Will you be saved at the end time? Will you follow Jesus on his way up? <laughs> Or will you be set ablaze in the fires of hell? Tasmania will be home for at least the next three years. Be warm up. The missionary priests have come to the same Catholic Church with the same beliefs, but a very different culture. I don't think this whole notion of importing priests is is problem-free. We have to consider the cultural differences, and I think the Nigerian expression of the Catholic faith is probably somewhat different to ours. For the missionaries themselves, 
it's culture shock. So fathers Kenne, Felix and Christopher embark on a four-week program devised to acclimatise them to Aussie culture and Aussie ways. Wow. Yeah, good. <laughs> the thing is coming out from my mouth. Eyes. This is... <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. That's good, man. <laughs> Big jaws. Just like the devil, really. Devil's bite. I hope it's not too much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what you yeah. have to do in Richmond. Yeah. 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 Let us know that we are here. Oh. Wow. Have your own out there. Go. I just admire the fact that these three young priests, young men, because they're in their 30s, have agreed to come to Tasmania. That's licorice. These men have come from a culture where they have a great respect, uh, perhaps on a pedestal. So they're, they're going to find that quite a challenge and, uh, and quite difficult. Tasmanians aren't used to seeing people of colour or people who have darker skin than they do. And I think, sadly, that they will probably experience occasions of prejudice. I think they'll find that very painful. They're uh, good fun, great sense of humour. They're all individuals, the three of them, very much individuals. We're working on African time, so that's, uh, you know, just when things happen, things happen. So it's a good learning curve for me too. <laughs> I must have to learn how to walk around the streets. And I notice that everybody is walking with patience. And that kind of thing in our, in our country, all of us, we are fast. Every Saturday, the priests meet for lunch. A dwindling number of diocesan priests, with the youngest in his 40s, serve all Tasmania's parishes. As they retire or die, there are no local replacements. We don't have it every Saturday because we're so small in numbers. We try and do it as often as possible. It's probably down to once a month or so now. So it's a good chance for the three Nigerian priests just to meet the locals. So we look at the first section, we just uh, some of the basic terms are defined there. So worksheets there. Um, basically, unit five is about, um, so what's the winch? New word for you. Fathers Felix, Kenne and Christopher are all struggling with the Australian accent. So if someone's having a whinge or is whinging, what, what are they doing? So they're getting a crash course in Aussie English before they can go solo as priests. So look at the sentence. This for me, I, I must have to make efforts to learn more phonetics. Did you find because I believe if I'm able to master the phonetics, Knowing the Australian accent, then I, I think I will be very effective in the parish. I want it to be warmer. I want the out to be warmer. The rite of mass is the same, but I think there'd be more exuberance and more uh, dancing and movement in Nigeria than there is here. I think we're fairly staid and conservative by comparison. It's the first time for the missionaries to take part in a Tasmanian parish mass. And it's also time for the congregations to start meeting them. So tonight I welcome, first of all, Father Christopher. Tasmania is part of a global crisis. 
as all over the developed world, there's an indifference to established religion. The missionaries have identified their first task. There are so many Catholics who don't attend church any longer. So uh, we strategy to get in contact with them and uh, make them understand and see the value in coming to the church. The Basilica Cathedral Church is filled up and you need about 3,000 to fill up the inside of the cathedral. Here, we have 11 masses from morning to evening, and each one is filled up, and people are staying outside. And if you walk some 10 minutes away, you meet another church. If you move another 10 minutes, you meet another church. It's just that way. And all of them are as filled up as this one. Will this faith, this zeal, transfer to Australia's Catholics? Tasmania's Archbishop Doyle is keen to find out if the missionaries can do it. You've got such a welcome committee. Hello. It's almost a month since they arrived and there was always the understanding that after that four week initial period that they would be uh, taking up their pastoral appointment in different places and so that time's arrived. That one is for you Felix and this is for you Kenny and that is for you Christopher. We are braced up for action. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for action. Yeah. yeah. Long since then, that's where I'll be going. Father Kelly is going to walk to Street. Assistant priest in the parish of Merce 11. Father Felix is off to Alberston to the northwest Greenway. Uh, this is my red of appointment. I can see the Holy Spirit wants me to be here. And Father Christopher will stay with me here at the cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the cathedral, Father Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, very glad. It'll be a good, it'll be a good thing. <laughs> They've shared their first month in Tasmania yeah. together. Yeah. It's now time for the mission to begin in earnest as they set out for their parishes. Father Kine, what's happening? Oh, uh, we are going to our areas of assignment. The bishop has assigned them to parishes where the priests are overworked, overstretched, and need a hand. Welcome. Oh, Good day. It's good to see Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to see you. This should be here for now. This is the Bible, the Peruviare. The Book of Sense and Daily Meditations. Oh, I now feel at home that I have come to take up the walk assigned to me, so... The food for hungry men. <laughs> I've lived by myself for the last uh, 24 years. I think there'll be some challenges for both of us. Okay? I'll be ordained 33 years a priest in three weeks' time. Lord, we ask you to bless this food we're about to receive. It's sort of a little bit frightening when men who are born about the time you're ordained are the people you're working with. I just went to rest. Yesterday I asked my mama, Mama, could you please tell me the road from here? It's not just the age gap between the priests that's hard to bridge. In Nigeria's culture of close tribal and family networks, the priests are never alone. For the fact that I'm alone, in Africa, in Australia, number one, then the, the life in Australia, I don't think you people have that extended family system. 
to that loneliness. Tasmania's west is famous for its rugged isolation and its sparse but tough population. It's here, up on the northwest coast, that Tasmania's Vicar General, Father Mark Freeman, is taking Father Felix under his wing. The, the wind is very light today. There's not much wind. Sometimes I think that the first few weeks and few months might be the challenging time until Felix gets used to being here in Mersey Leaven. The oldest church in the parish, so it's really good. Felix has revealed that he doesn't cook at all. I think the best thing I can do with Felix is to instruct him on how to use the microwave and heat things up, to be really honest. Well, Felix was telling me last night they, in the parish that he was working in, at the main masses there would be 2,000 people at the mass. Not 2,000 across all the masses, but 2,000 at the one mass. You become for us the bread of life. Yes. So it's very different. Our biggest congregation is probably about 200. I counted up to 15 persons yesterday in morning mass. Uh, uh, it's unimaginable over there that you will see in a morning mass less than uh, 500 persons. It's unimaginable, yeah. Only a month ago, Father Felix was preaching to thousands at every mass in this church in Onich's city centre. And Jesus is also a lost man. But like the numbers at the masses, everything in the missionaries' new lives has been reversed. You can see I'm now accustomed to right hand driving. Unlike when I came, one thing I, I learned here in Australia is that whenever you come to road in intersection, you have to stop, look left, right. <laughs> it's really, in fact, uh, the first time I came, I felt somehow about it, but now it has become a part of me. Only six weeks into the mission, and the Nigerian priests are just beginning their Tasmanian journey. We sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels say. But for the local clergymen, having missionary priests fill the numbers in their ranks is not going to be easy. I think that we sometimes too easily take people from another country, another culture, and we don't face up to that question of what is it about ourselves that there's no one coming forth from our communities to become priests. How are you? I'm well, thanks. I'm, well. I'm not convinced of the argument that this is the solution. In the church, that is radically different to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to their experience of church. Yeah, but suppose I come to you see, <laughs> In many ways, I mean, it's not the ideal situation. All of a sudden, we're the mission country. Now that, I think, is most significant for the Australian church. Do you people understand me? Because the boot has been on the other foot. And now, we are, we're the people who are being ministered to by literally missionary priests. As the mission continues, Domestic arrangements are changing. I'm now working with Felix, and Felix is working with me. And this is my firstborn. This is Yash. Come here, darling. Good boy. He's a very nervous dog. Will Father Felix be able to cope with a new housemate? 
in Nigeria, we do have a houseboys cook, people who do all this work. This is salt. Without houseboys at the presbytery, can Father Christopher fend for himself? As a priest in Nigeria, I never thought of entering inside a kitchen because we don't cook in Nigeria as a priest. Please proceed to the highlighted route. And will Father Kenne find his congregation? Destination ahead. Drive three kilometers, then turn left. Find out next week on The Mission. The students were asked, where was Father Felix? Late, <laughs> and they wrote, <laughs> he was sleeping in. <laughs>